We were literally going back and forward over who to put in. And I just knew what the game needed. And I've told you this, so this is no yeah. offense to you because for I sure. love this about you. You actually, you actually, before you told this story, I think for the first time publicly, you called, I think and you left me a voicemail to be like, <laughs> Kelly, right. I'm gonna say this. Hopefully it's okay. It's okay. And I like yeah. list, I was like, why is Jill leaving me a voicemail? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> so I literally turned to Tony and said, we need a to get Kelly, man. We need, we've got it. And you came in and you freaking scored all. And, Pr- you know, proud just- to be one, proud to be one. <laughs> Players Pod is proud to be sponsored by longtime partner WIS. As your go-to accounting and growth partner, WIS understands the power of teamwork and they're ready to take your business to the next level. To learn more about how WIS can help you succeed, head over to WIS.com. That's W-I-S-S.com to accelerate your company's journey today. What is up, everybody? It feels good to be back. Welcome to the Players Pod, where I have the chance to sit down and talk to some of the biggest names in sports about the untold stories behind their success. I'm Kelly O'Hara, and on today's episode, the very first of this new season, we have none other than Jill Ellis. Jill Ellis is one of the most successful soccer managers of all time. As a coach of the U.S. Women's National Team, she became the first manager to ever win back-to-back Women's World Cups. As a head coach at UCLA, she led the Bruins to six straight Pac-10 conference titles and eight college cups during her tenure. After stepping down from the national team in 2019, Jill has continued to work as an ambassador for U.S. soccer and is currently the president of San Diego Wave FC, one of the two NWSL clubs making their debuts this season. I wanted to have Jill on for a variety of reasons. For starters, we've had a lot of shared memories from our time together on the national team. Um, Jill was a wildly successful coach, yet she was often criticized during her five-year run coaching the U.S. Women's National Team. And despite this, I personally think Jill always was quick to shrug it off um, and publicly took the high road. And today, I want to give her the chance to speak candidly about her time as a national team coach, because I find it all very fascinating, Um, especially now since she's had a few years to be removed from all of that. And then also, I wanna talk about your new role with San Diego Wave FC. So um, we'll start there today, but first, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on. I'm great, I'm great. And because of you, that's why I said yes to this. So, uh, (laughs) you know, always uh, always love to follow what you're doing and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, when we planned on expanding the pod from or changing the pod from Just Women Sports podcast to Players Pod and, you know, opening it up to not just athletes, but coaches, managers, investors, presidents, I was like, they brought up you. And I was like, yes, that'll be such a good conversation. There's so much that we can talk about. um, And we've been through so much together. So I thought it would be it'd be really cool. And we're going to get to all of the U.S. Women's National Team stuff. But first, I want to ask, how is it being the president of San Diego Wave FC? And also kind of a dumb question, like, what exactly does an NWSL president do? (laughs) A lot, let me tell you. Yeah, I bet. Um, Well, I think mainly because we're, you know, we're a startup and we had such a short runway to get a team assembled, prepped, you know, facility up and everything. So we're, yeah, we had a pretty short runway. So it's been a lot of, um, you know, hiring people. Uh, you know, I took the approach, Cal, to, to really focus on the soccer piece first. So I, I hired Molly Downton. Um, yep. I just knew great logistically. Hire. Yeah, she's just, she's tremendous. Um, you know, such a great trust and respect between us that um, I hired her and then, you know, tried to target uh, a top coach and then obviously brought Casey in. So really started there beyond the business piece and then sort of shifted over the last six months to really focus on, um, you know, I'm learning so much, right? Like it's ticketing, it's sponsorship, you know, yeah. my team sends emails and I get excited. Yay. We landed a sleeve sponsor and stuff. So it's, you know, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, I felt like I was busy and, and had a lot to do when, when I had my previous jobs, but yep. this, this is exponentially more, but, uh, but I'm really, learning. you I'm, think, oh yeah, I'm learning so much. I mean, it's eight and nine hour days on, on calls, on zooms, meetings, um, and again, I think once we get a lot of the mechanisms up and running, it's uh, it will slow down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, everything you just you just don't think about it when you're in our position. You don't think yep. about who hangs the banners and who puts on the DJ. I mean, it's just it's soup to nuts. It's a lot. So you, you guys but have I'm a DJ it. at your at your oh, games? hell yeah yeah oh, for sure. Nice. 
yeah it's, we, we just want to have people to have a party and it's so far so good we're we're, we're getting some great great crowds and people seem to be enjoying themselves but I yeah listen that. i'm loving it and it's it's a big part of why i wanted to step into this role was to kind of stretch myself a little bit for sure i assumed that would be part of the answer was like it's something that you probably brought skills from being a manager but again are in such a there's so many other things that you have to consider and account for as a president. And I'm, but I am curious, like, what do you think skills wise, your, your biggest ones you've taken as a manager that you've brought over to being a president? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll share this quick vignette. So when I met with the owner, um, you know, I was going to do some consulting and he was sort of talking about his goal and vision for, for women's football, it's Ron Burkle. And, uh, you know, as he was sort of talking through, I'm like, man, I, I, I don't want to consult. I want to try and run the whole thing. So I basically said that to him. I was like, you know what? He's like, what kind of role? You know, and I said, I, I want to be your president. I want to run the whole thing. And he kind of paused and looked at me and, um, you know, he said, okay. And then he, and I said to him, listen, I didn't go to Wharton, but, <laughs> and, and, to, and to your point, I, but I know how to assemble people, empower people, get the most, you know, out of people. And, and that's, you know, it's, it's a people business, right? I mean, life is, but and he said, okay. So I went home and, and he sent me an email a day later and it said, you know, it was a bold ask. Uh, here's a bold offer. Let's go do this. So, That's you know, amazing. It was, yeah. So it was just kind of one of those situational things where I just got really excited about this, this next step in the game. So, yeah. So what have I been doing? Um, certainly hiring people similar to managing a staff, you know, you, you want to make sure that they feel that you have accountability and responsibility. Um, and again, we are, what's been challenging most with this Kelly is that we've done it all remotely. So we started mm. this whole thing. And so, you know, building a culture and, and creating connections is a challenge when obviously you haven't even met in person. Like the first time we met in person, it was, I don't know, a few weeks ago and it was, everyone was so excited. So that's been, yeah. you know, been challenging. For sure. Are you enjoying the fact that, cause obviously as you know, manager of, women's national team and even in college you get to kind of pick out players that you want to come play for you but mm -hmm. you get a pick of the whole world essentially to be like do you want to come play for san diego wave fc so are you enjoying the 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 pool that you get to the pick to pick from yes it's um you know when we when we started and, and casey and i had conversations you know about what does she want the profile of her players to be how does she want it to look and um, you know, I just got excited because I think, you know, she she wants to play a, a very attacking brand. So, yes, we the ability to go out and now target players to try and, you know, uh, convince them to, to come. I mean, obviously, I'm learning a lot about trades and windows and all the other stuff that goes into play and acquisitions. But um, but yes, overall, you know, as you start to build this team out and, you know, we're for sure not a finished product where but over time, you know, bringing in all the pieces. I mean, our group right now, we love it's it's a great group of players and, and really good chemistry. I think that looking at, and no offense to LAFC, but I do think that it, looking on paper, San Diego Wave, I feel like you guys have done a very good job of putting together what could potentially be a very strong and competitive team within this league, except for when you play the Spirits, because we'll beat you. Just throwing that there. Uh, I expected that. Come yeah, on. but um, but I, I think that what it looks like, you guys have done a very good job. Um, do you have certain metrics you're using to measure success as an expansion team? Because being an expansion team is very difficult in this league. So I'm curious what, if you have any and what those are. It's a great question because now from the position I'm in, it's not just W and L's, right? Like it's now I, the metrics I'm looking at is, you know, is, is fans in the state seats and, you know, our merchandise. So it's so, but, but to go keep it just on the soccer for a minute, I mean, you know, I, I think what we tried to do was to build a group of players and, and obviously, Casey's kind of the catalyst to this, right, is to um, bring in a group of players that we felt, you know, uh, and no disrespect, we felt that over time expansion teams have come in and it's been, a, it's been a slow to warm kind of thing. And we just, I think the most biggest thing we wanted to do was to be able to come out and be competitive, you know, come out and be competitive right away. It's going to take a long, not a long time, not a long time, but it's going to take time to, you know, gel and, and get the coaches some philosophy and all those things. So it is about being patient, but, um, to your point, I think we've got some exciting players uh, that, you know, have some special skills. And I think when those start to mesh and blend, um, hopefully we can make some noise in this league. Yeah, hopefully, but not too Especially against noise. the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. Well, so 
again, think it's very cool that you've taken on this new role. Um, and obviously you're going to bring, like you said, a lot of things from your coaching days, years, um, and experiences. So, but to now switch over to your USWNT head coach stint run as the head coach and you were the interim head coach in 2012. That's right. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't either. Really, it's kind of was a it was it was it um was it like Pia left right after the Olympics in 2012 or not right after but like yeah. in the fall and then what was the time frame from you being interim to Tom being hired? Honestly, I, I, I you don't remember either. I don't remember. I mean, I know Pia stepped away and obviously you know I was with Pia and um and just kind of kept the seat warm until they hired Tom and. You know, I think initially Tom was like, ah, oh, you know, want to stay on. And, you know, I was very committed to what I was doing at UCLA. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just said, no, nah, this is this is yours. And, you know, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, I don't honestly I couldn't tell you who we played or if there was how many games. But um, you were yeah, I, you definitely were. But I do remember the when I got hired, the first, I remember April calling me. She goes, man, you're starting with France. Two games. You could be 0-2 right out of the gate. I'm like, holy shit, you know. Is like, that, wait, when you got hired in 20. 14. 14 yeah we our Got first it. two games were France I think we had uh, you know a series um in the U.S. against them and I always remember April saying that to me I was like oh <laughs> yeah, thanks, be, thanks for that great start well yeah. so okay I didn't I didn't remember that you were interim but then like as I thought back and I was like oh maybe I kind of remember that but obviously interim for 2012 you're with us in the Olympics um and with Pia but 2014 is when you became full-time head coach U.S. Women's National Team, and it was spring of 2014, and like you said, you got called and said you might start off 0-2. <laughs> um, a year, a little over a year out from 2015 World Cup, so you accept this job as manager. Like, what are you thinking? Can you talk about the state of the team at the time, your expectations as manager with very little time to prepare for World Cup? Like, what were you thinking? What were you feeling? Well, just to, to slide back a little bit, okay. you know, when 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 the CEO Dan Flynn called me and said, you know, he was talking about the job, and I said, listen, you know, I, I'd love to put my name in the hat. Here's two other names for you. Mm. And as I started to go through that process and started to kind of drill into the strengths, you know, you kind of do that SWOT analysis thing, you know, strengths and looking at everything. I was like, man, I really want this job. So, you know, mm. I felt I felt an incredible um, sense of pride, really, when I when I got the job and, and was in, you know, recognized the responsibility. The beauty of it is with Pia, I'd been there in 08, I'd been there in 12. So I'd seen, you know, high, high expectations in terms of just, you know, outcomes, but more so just the level and the, being the day to day and the training and the environment. So it wasn't foreign to me. Um, so I felt like I had a little bit of a, you know, an inside peek in, in terms of that. But listen, yeah, I mean, I right out the gate, silver ain't good enough, right? You you learn that, you know that. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, it was kind of like, wow, let's just freaking go for it. And, you know, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But let's do everything we possibly can. And, I, I, you know, I remember the first meeting with the players, you know, and I thought, you know what, this is when you're working with elites, um, if you go in there and you say, yay, we're doing great, we're gonna keep this thing going, you know, you're all kind of like, but I remember, I don't know if you remember, I put up this quote, um, even if you're on the right track, if you sit there, you'll get run over. Cause I wanted to kind of poke the bear a little bit and say, yeah. and I actually said where we are today is not good enough to win next year. Mm. We've got nine, 10 months to really hone our processes, get better. And I looked at everything because I think the thing, Cal, is when you take over something that's very successful, like you just won the Olympics in 2012, you know, you're not going to exponentially make something 50% better. you got to find these incremental ways um, of trying to raise the level in everything from nutrition to your staff, to schedule, to the players, you know, to the pool. You look at everything when you're a coach and you see how you can nudge that on. And then you hope the aggregate of that will kind of push you over the edge. Um, so that was kind of my approach, but I remember the first meeting putting up a map with the World Cup trophy at the back, and I said, that's our destination. So it wasn't mincing words. It wasn't sort of coming in and say, let's hope. It was like, that's our goal, to top of the podium. Um, yeah. And I think I knew the mindset of the players, and they for sure, because remember, it had been 16 years since we lifted that trophy. No, I know. And again, not a lot of time to prepare. And I do remember you putting up that quote, because it is such a good quote, and it's a quote that's so applicable to this team because like you said we have been very successful through the generations through the years through the tournaments but 
you have to keep moving forward if you want to keep being successful because if you don't like you said you're going to get run over so what what do you think was like your biggest focus or what do you think you brought in to change or like catalyze us to be ready for that world cup because i can remember some certain things but i'm curious what <laughs> you should share. <laughs> um well you know i think a little bit of it and i don't even know if you remember this but i thought you know i, I took you guys to brazil for uh, in december mm-hmm. and typically december was off and i think a little bit of my approach was one, we can't waste a minute because now we're about six months out. Yeah. Two, two, let's learn as much as I can about ourselves because, you know, I think the debate in, in my mind was we were playing a certain system. Do we have time to change that? How much personnel can we change? Mm-hmm. You know, is, uh, do you clean house? Do you keep what we've got? I mean, those are the conversations that you have. And so I think, you know, taking us down to that, that tournament in Brazil, and I know you guys were miserable and you hated it. It was but terrible. It, it was we terrible. We were never successful in Brazil, unfortunately. Well, we had flooded fields, flooded everything. Yeah, it was But, I, you know, I remember in my head going, this might be exactly what we need. A little slice mm-hmm. of humble pie to kind of recenter ourselves, know that we've got work to do. Then when you guys were in your preseason, I remember this, I took you to France. We got our asses kicked. And at that point, you're kind of like, because you want to push, but then you don't want to lose the group, right? Like you want to make sure we're, because we, I had to learn more about, you know, what were our strengths and, and deficiencies, et cetera. And you only do that by playing the best team. So we went to France, then we played England. And, uh, you know, it was that point, you know, I remember Abby kind of saying, you know what, we've, I remember her saying this to the group, we've done the same thing for years and years and years. So maybe we should try something different. And that was kind of my approach was to take this different. And I think we learned a lot. First of all, we learned how to deal with adversity. Uh, I learned a lot about the player pool. I learned about, you know, our flexibility, you know, can we play in a three front if, if Abby's on nine and all these, you know, all these things. And then I think really it was settling into because you don't have a lot of time in performance yeah. period it was just a matter of like hey these are the people we're going to bet on i know they're winners i remember having a conversation with abby and being like and she's the only person that i've ever said pretty far out you're coming or you made the team and mm-hmm. i remember sort of saying to abby you know i take you if you're on one leg we need you and your leadership and just you know just the personality that she is that she wasn't going to in that first opening game um i, I needed her on the pitch yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a, a lot of a lot of learnings. I well, what's uh, what's your recollection? Well, I remember sitting in Canada in 2015. We're at the World Cup, and again, it's been this crazy, crazy sped up process because we've only had a year to get ready. I remember, Jan- I think it was January camp of 2015. That was like the hardest January camp we'd ever had. We were all like, what? are these you and Tony on because this is <laughs> insane what they're asking us to do and I remember you guys putting up a picture about like pressure right mm-hmm. and you guys basically said oh, that's right. we Internal. have yes we have been putting pressure on you guys internally so that you can handle that when the external pressure comes Yep. from this tournament and it's yep. going to come and all this internal pressure is now going to deflate we're yep. taking that off the table we've prepared you so that now when you experience this external pressure of a world cup of the media of fans of just everything that the, the critiques that come and and just even in-game experiences you can handle it and i remember sitting there and being like wow <laughs> it's like really, it's, really uh, smart. You that's, know, um, that's crazy. That you remember that? I mean, I remember actually trying to <laughs> to do an animation to show the the internal kind of decreasing and the the performance yeah. zone around the outside. Yeah, I mean, yes. that's incredible that you remember that. But that was kind of the goal was to, you know, I, like I remember in 2019 being asked in a press conference, you know, how's your team going to handle the pressure? And I was like, we live in it every single day, and yes. and that was really the approach. And um, you know, and listen, we were slow to warm in that World Cup. I mean. We it took a while were. for us to get going, but, um, you know, persistence is the mother of all virtues. We got there. For sure. So we, we're in Vancouver, we're not in Vancouver, but we're in Canada. And as you said, it took us a while to warm up uh, during the World Cup. At what point did you make the switch of like, all right, Carly's now our nine. Yep. We're moving her from the midfield. You know, we, we probably put out how many different lineups in the first couple games and I didn't play until the quarterfinals. Like, 
or no, yeah, quarters. And so how did you, how did you feel during, that was your first World Cup. Yep. What was that experience like? How did you handle the changes? Like uh, walk me through that, that yeah. what was happening in your mind? Yeah, because going into the tournament, I don't know if you remember, Alex was injured. Um, so we knew medically what we were told is we can probably see Alex in the quarters. Yeah. So it was sort of, you know, let's, let's, and, and listen, it, and maybe not at all. Right. We weren't, we weren't really sure. Um, you know, but I remember a rod stepped up and, you know, Abby yep. scored a big goal against night. So, you know, we were, we were kind of going through this process, but I, I remember in my head, you know, going, going back and forward, uh, for the China game, whether it's got a rod or, um, Alex to start. And I remember, uh, partnering with that with uh, Carly, but I remember mm. um, my staff was split. I was like, you know, mm. I'm going to go to bed and think on this one. And okay. I, I, I remember this is the only time. I mean, like I sleep pretty well, right? 3:29 a.m. Like, you remember the time? I do because yeah. I looked at the clock and I was like, I, no, I woke up and I was like, Alex. Oh. And it was, you know, it was just kind of you know sometimes as a coach you just got to go with your gut and different things and whatever. But but in terms of you know pushing Carly higher. Mm -hmm wasn't right she was she was getting hot she was scoring goals totally um you know she she had a big engine um and it was really kind of finding that partner with her because she can play underneath um and and now with alex it's you know we got someone to stretch the line so it was kind of you know that and then obviously in that game we had some suspensions we saw we saw mo have a great game um uh, you know i think cheney was suspended yep so Chaney, you know we you know. saw other players step in but i think with carly it was just this realization that you know, so much of tournaments is when you have the confidence and you, and you play the hot hand and Carly was scoring goals and was generating chances. And, and so that was kind of what led that to, to that decision. Couple that with, you know, Alex, I think coming back. Yeah, for sure. So how did you feel as the tournament ticked on? You know, we make it into the semifinals. Semifinals game is wild. Germany has a PK. They yes. miss. We get a PK. Carly smashes at home i score like lol do you want me um, to give you your story remember that one? i mean you <laughs> can, yeah let, we could we could go through that that's a good yeah. one too so this um, is this yeah because i got to give you some credit here right so so here's what happened every day i would go out to the training of the players that that didn't play get a lot of minutes and every day you were absolutely crushing it and killing it and i've i've used this story many many times because you didn't hang your head. You didn't throw up your arms. You didn't complain. You, you just continued to impress. And you know, I mean, I know your assets and skill sets. And and so I remember in the Germany game, you know, Pina was playing on the uh, we were playing four four two. Pina was playing on the on the wide side, and you know, she's fatiguing a little bit. And Tony's like, you know, Pino's too tired. I'm like, well, no shit, you know. Like <laughs> I said, and we were literally going back and forward over who to put in. And I just knew what the game needed. And I've told you this, so this is no yeah. offense to you because for I sure. love this about you. You actually, you actually, before you told this story, I think for the first time publicly, you called, I think, and you left me a voicemail to be like, <laughs> Kelly, right. I'm going to say this. Hopefully it's okay. it's okay. And I like, yeah. list, I was like, why is Jill leaving me a voicemail? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally turned to Tony and said, we need a bitch. Get Kelly, man. We need, we've got it. And you came in and you freaking scored all. And, Pr you know, proud just, to be one. Proud to be one. It was just, it was the perfect, you know, it was. It was just that, um, you know, you, you gave us exactly what you needed, but it was well earned, well deserved. And, you know, I think, you know, between us, I mean, from you there, it was just, you know, you took off, right? Even more. Because um, your road hasn't been, you know, it's been like this at times. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Even under you, like, it's definitely been, yeah, it was yeah. not smooth sailing always. Yeah. No, um, I remember, I remember, you know, I remember that, you know, I, remember when I was there in 11 and I was like, wow, this, she's not ready, you know, and no. then, then you got ready, you know, it was just anyway. So listen, I think that the Germany game, um, I remember us as a staff sitting there and, the key to us was actually what we knew what they wanted to do is they wanted to kind of the goalkeeper didn't have a strong leg. So we, mm -hmm. they wanted to kind of play out and play long. And I remember, remember we locked everything. We forced yep. the goalkeeper to, to kick and, and then we were just transitioning. So um, I, yeah, that game was amazing. I mean, I think, you know, if there was an amped highly charged game, it was one of the ones that sticks in my mind. Top, top three, at least. Yeah. I, I was behind the goal when, um, Germany got the PK with A Rod warming up. And I just remember being like, oh my God, like this yep. is this is bad. And then they missed and lost my mind. And I was like, we we're still in it. We've got a chance. And then the rest is history. But we go on to the finals. We win. What was that moment like for you? Like, I can't even imagine. I mean, obviously, as a player, it's incredible, but yeah. as a manager, it's just 
Yeah. It, you know, this is an, um, yeah, I'm, I'll get emotional. I, I, was, I was so happy for the players because yeah. I knew there were players, you know, I think one of my most proud moments was having Abby and Piercy finish their game, their careers, essentially their top careers as world champions. Yeah. Because it, it you know, and then I knew the fans wanted it. So I, like, honestly, you know, I was, it was more relief. Like I think 2019 was kind of satisfaction because it was this whole process, but 2015, it was like, there was so much, there was so much expectation on the players, you know, and, and it'd been so long. And as a country, we, you know, you feel like you deserve it, but you got to earn it. And so I think that was just my emotion was like, oh my gosh, I remember going to the after party and I stayed like 20 minutes because I had just a banging headache. I was like, I'm just going to go home. But um, I was just so happy for, for the players, you know, I, again, like, you know, some of those players just, that was the one piece in their, you know, storied careers that was missing. So that was special. And yeah, yeah, it was just, it was phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah incredible um well we go from that very high high the right. almost you know the highest of highs in football and then 2016 olympics so we come into this year no one's no team has ever won world cup and then olympics back to back um and <laughs> we obviously have a lot of pressure we've just won the world cup we feel like we have a good chance of winning the olympics we had won in 2012 we had won 2012 20 2008 2004 so yeah. the last three, yeah. um, so very similar roster from the World Cup because it's such yep. a short time frame. Yep, and we we come up short. We have the worst placement of the U.S. Women's National Team in a tournament. I think we 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 crash out in the quarterfinals against yep. Sweden. So, question for you on that: Do you have any regrets from the preparation or your decisions leading into the tournament or at the tournament? Um, you know, to your point, I think it was a short runway. Um, I remember, I remember sitting with the team in January of that year and saying, you know, no one's ever done this. Let's go make history. And we got to earn it. Remember, we were, remember the mountaintop we're on it. I yep. said, we got to climb again, blah, 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 all that thing. So you, so you can talk about those things. Um, I, you know, I think as a coach, you, you, you know, you want to hammer home, but sometimes success does change people a little bit. Um, and sometimes in a good way, right? You gain confidence from that. And sometimes yeah. it's it's kind of like, so, you know, that's what we were trying to guard from was just making sure we were as hungry. We had as much to prove. Um, and yeah, I mean, going in, I think the, you know, the team we put on the pitch was very similar. Um, you know, I don't think, again, we had a whole lot of time to, to change a lot and bring, we, we did bring in some, some younger pers people for that. As, yeah. um, but, you know, regrets, um, you know, I mean, it was a game, you know, again, it was a game we dominated. I think, do I wish it had been different? Of course, but <laughs> yeah. regrets in, in what the preparation was in the players we selected and in, in what we did. No. And I think that's part of, you know, as a coach, it's like, when I make a decision, it's a decision that I'm comfortable with. If it goes wrong, I own it, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of, and so I made this decision to go with this and this is what we're going to do. It's X, Y, Z. Um, and it, yeah, it didn't work out. Would I have changed a lot? No, I don't, I don't believe I would have. Um, you know, I think on that day we, we create a lot of chances and sometimes it's, it's football. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, obviously incredibly heartbreaking for everyone. Every successful athlete and entrepreneur knows that setbacks, mistakes, and losses are all a part of becoming a champion. Like a great coach or teammate, WIS helps business leaders find the vision and strength they need to succeed. Whether it's international taxes or advice around staffing, mergers, and finance, WIS is ready to assist your company in its championship journey. As proud supporters of female entrepreneurs, WIS not only sponsors the Players Pod, but they also sponsor the Just Women Sports brand new Ballers Market a first-of-its-kind online marketplace for female athlete entrepreneurs. You can check it out at justwomensports.com slash ballers hyphen marketplace. To further this mission, WIS is giving away an unreal prize package of Ballers Market gear and JWS swag. To enter the giveaway, tweet at both Just Women Sports at Just W Sports and WIS at WIS LLP with the name of a coach who has helped you succeed either on or off the field. And then head to WIS.com, that's W-I-S-S.com, to learn how WIS can help you turn a setback into a winning opportunity. After that loss, was there any part of you that was like, all right, I won a World Cup, didn't do well in Olympics, I 
I, like, I think I've done enough here. I'm, I want to step away. Or were you like, no, I, I want, I can do this again. Oh yeah. I mean, no, I wanted to, you know, it was like, hell no, let's, you know, I, you know, I think you, you learn so much and, and you're so passionate and you, you know, you care. I mean, you know, I always, I've said this many times, you know, you can, you can love your players. Sometimes they don't love you back, but you got to love them. And, and, and there was just this idea that, um, no, I think we, we felt, you know, my staff, that we felt like we were the best group to know this group to kind mm. of go through this, you know, this process to, to continue to develop us. So, yeah, but the truth is, listen, you, you kind of see our president, see Sunil there and you're like, oh, my God, is, is the axe coming? I mean, it, you know, it's the inevitable, right? It's, yeah. You don't get a medal. And, and you know, we all know if you don't get the capital of winning a World Cup, you're out. Um, yeah. Because the bar is so high. I mean, you know, listen, I, don't, I think if we hadn't won, you know, even if we'd gotten silver, would I have been disappointed? Yeah, because yeah. that's just how we're wired. So, um but no, I really wanted that um, opportunity, and it's it's kind of funny because when you when you fail, you know, U.S. Soccer is like, we want to know why, and you come up there, you know, when you win, it's like, yeah, you know, we just yeah. move past it. But no, no, no explanation here. There, there's you know, there has to be the autopsy. So I flew yeah. to New York. You know, I I did did a lot of you know obviously thinking and and you know. Uh, planning and a lot of it was planning for here's what we have to do mm -hmm. um, because you know as a coach you can have a rear view mirror but it's got to be a small one because it's all about what's in front of you and that's kind of what I said to you guys in the locker room it's like listen we can grieve for a couple of days but mm -hmm. we, there was another game to play so yeah was I uh, did I feel good that we you know our staff had the opportunity to continue yes because I felt like we had the best sense of of what needed to happen yeah um you know, we, we learned a lot in that game. You know, we learned so much. And uh, I think it helped set the trajectory towards 2019, to be fair. I, I agree because I think that, or I assume that it was part of the, it was a catalyst for fall of 2016 is when you very publicly said, you know, you were going to experiment with the mm -hmm. team, um, bring in different rosters, lineups, and that's what we had to do to get ready Um for the 2019 World Cup. So before you publicly said that and did that, were you nervous for the reaction? Because within US soccer or with the US Women's National Team, I truly feel before you came on as coach, it was very like incremental, brought in a couple new players at a time, but it was a pretty consistent roster. And it was kind yeah. of not tenure, but a lot of times that was the case for players they 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 earned it they deserved it but it wasn't like a big change all at once ton of new players in so how did you feel before making that decision and executing on it yeah it's a great point because um you know i remember when i took in fact i remember when pia was interviewing um i had a conversation with with our ceo dan flynn and i remember saying to him i said i think we're still at the point right now where players are picked on precedent not performance like mm. it was based on what they'd done over time not whether whether they were in form and you listen i mean i i think ultimately you you go through as a coach you go through a development period then there's got to be a performance period where you've got to you've got to your hierarchy needs to be set. You have to have everything ready to go. And I, you know, I feel that six months out, you have to have a, a really good idea of, hey, players know their role, understand the position, the, the hierarchy, et cetera. But so, yeah, I mean, I think it was, you know, Tony and I had a lot of conversations, Steve. I remember us just saying, it was like, yeah, it's probably, it may cost us our jobs, right? Because, you know, I sat there in front of these guys and I, my, my um, administrators, my, my bosses, and I said, yeah, they're going to call you. <laughs> they're going to be pissed. They're going to be stressed. Um, but I don't think we grow and I don't think we find the rose and the, either these players if we don't go through this process. And I also felt like we needed to be more tactically adept and and just grow more as a team and be yeah. able to play different way, da, 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 different systems. So, um, yeah, I mean, we we did. We kind of talked about it. And it's kind of that thing I talk about all the time. You know, you can tell your bosses and they go, yeah, we're with you. you I stood in front of you guys and said the same thing. Yeah, they're perfect. And then when you're in it and it's shit. Um, and it's hard is when, yeah, that's when your resolve gets tested. But I didn't, I didn't question what we had to do um, mm. because I felt like it had to, you know, we had to go through this process. But when you're in it and the reporters are like, hey, you worried about losing your job. And you're like, <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> well, but the thing is, and I think what was liberating for me, Kelly is like, 
you know what? I'm I, like from the time I was five years old, my mother always said, just go do your best. Yeah. And and you you takes the pressure off of you. And if it's part of the job. I remember the day before I went and took my first coaching job, my father said to me, I was about to embark on my new career. He's like, not a coach until you've been fired. I'm like, holy shit, what's he saying? But, <laughs> Thanks, but what Seth. he was saying to it's me so was- so true though. Yes, it, it's it's a part of the job. So honestly, going through that, um, you know, and I, I don't ever toot my horn, maybe I was the right person because I really, I didn't feel, if, if I was gonna get fired, I was gonna get fired. So I'm gonna try this and do this and believe in this. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, was it was it challenging? For sure. I mean, it was hard on everybody, right? Yeah. Um, fans, players, you know, everybody. So, but I think we came out on the backside, a better team. Yeah, we absolutely did. And to, to touch on the subject of firing, um, clearly, and this is very public in, what was it? Summer of 2017, yeah. Yep. Um, players went to US Soccer and said Jill needs to be fired and um and by U.S. soccer I mean Sunil and I remember this happening and I was a player and I'm not never said you were perfect was definitely like Jill has her flaws Tony has his flaws like yes they there are things they can absolutely do better but guys like have we all brought our best to this environment or have we just been kind of coasting and or looking for scapegoat or someone to blame because if you can tell me you've brought your best to this environment and we're not being successful and jill is the reason we're not being successful fine but if you can honestly look in the mirror and say that okay but i don't think you can and a lot of players actually came to me after the fact and were like you're right i wasn't and so that was like a I, I I remember going through and being like dang because I remember it happening to Tom I remember people wanting Pia out at the you know and I'm like it's, guys the it's grass a part is of the not history. Yeah. it is I'm like also the grass isn't always greener like no. you don't know what you're gonna get if you ask for it and my biggest thing at the moment was like tell me you've brought your best and then we can look elsewhere but until we look at ourselves personally. We can't, I don't think we should be blaming other people. But that is all to say, what was your reaction when you found out players had gone to Sunil and said, we want Jill out? Well, the irony there is I was so, you know, I, I remember even after we won a World Cup, I think I think Becky and Carly were the captains. I, you know, I can't remember when, when was what, but I remember meeting with them both. And I said, listen, here's the reality of this job and here's the history of this position. The players are going to get upset. I said, but I don't want to be blindsided by that. Yeah. I want you to come to me and tell me they've called your superiors, whatever. I said, can we agree to that? And they're like, yeah. And to be fair, they came to me and they told me. And I don't know if you remember, the next day we were playing Australia. And the debate yes. in my mind was, you know, do I bring this up? Do I not bring this up? And I'm like, you know, I'm not someone to you know, kind of live in the shadows. So I was like, yeah. So I remember in, in the team meeting before the game saying, listen, I know, you know, some of you are gone, some of you are unhappy. And did I expect that? Yes. And I reminded you guys, I think I put it up on the board of what I have said. This is going to be hard, stressful. There's going to be anxiety. You're going to be pissed off. Some of you will be on the journey. Some of you won't. Yep. This is where we're at, guys. And it was kind of one of those moments. We end up losing that game. Yep. But <laughs> you, it didn't, was... you didn't start me. You played somebody yeah, You played probably. somebody over me. Well, I was and trying I was out like, people, Cal. No, I, I know just, you yeah. were. You were. And I was like, I, I don't necessarily agree with this, but okay. You know, like yeah. it is your decision. Well, and that was, you know, that was, you know, part of what, what maybe people don't, maybe don't, but she believes and the tournament of nations was something I, I went to your soccer. I'm like, we've got to create a yep. platform where we, where we compete for points and there's medals. There's something at stake because the Europeans have euros. We don't have anything. So we had that tournament. And I remember thinking, Oh my God, <laughs> way to, you know, do you experiment in this tournament or do you yep. not? Yeah. And then you're like, you got to be all to. in with what you believe. Yeah, it was the yeah. same. I mean, I think it started Rose and she believes, and I think it was her first start against France. And yep, so I remember that too. <laughs> you kind of have to be all in. So, um, yeah, I mean, was that hard? Yeah. Did I, did I say to Sunil, told you so this was going to happen, you know? Yes. yes. Um, but you know, I mean, to be fair, it was, you know, him and I had conversations and, you know, I think my only piece to him was there's going to be some, some strong voices, but make sure everybody has a voice. That mm. was kind of my my recommendation. Yeah. You know, talk to everybody because you know there are some people that are 
suffering because their roles changed or maybe they've been pushed aside a little bit for letting room for other people. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, there's also people that are really appreciative of this this change and this transition, et cetera, et cetera. So, and it's a balance, right? You, you, you've got to make sure you've got enough to, to have that core of what you need, but also replenish and not even replenish, but bring new elements. Yeah, well, absolutely. We didn't have you a have player to, like Rose. You have to evolve. Rose. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like looking at this team, you have to, you have to do it, even cool. though it's difficult and it's hard conversations and it's uncomfortable a lot of times. Um, but no, I, I respect you a lot for going through with that. Like, I still remember you being like, Rose Lavelle will be at the World Cup. She will make the difference for us at the World Cup. And I remember, love you, Rose. I remember, if she ever listens to this, I remember you, I remember this was like very early on with mm -hmm. Rose in the system and she had gotten hurt and was out for, you know, a, almost maybe a year. I don't even know, a long time. Yeah. But I remember time. in that time she was out, you saying this to me of like, Rose is going to be a like a difference maker at in 2019. And I remember being like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, <Sure>. What? <laughs> how do we know that? You know, like, how does she know this? And lo and behold, Rose scores in the World Cup final and in, you know, is a starter and plays incredibly throughout this turn that tournament and is is a difference maker for us. And and you believed that and you knew it and you stuck to your guns. And I respect you for doing that. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember calling Rosie's college coach and saying, okay, what's the deal? She's, I, I try and invite her in and she's always hurt. And, and Rose, yeah. Rose has talked about this story, but I literally had a, you know, the rubber hit the road and I didn't know Rose that well. I'm like, Rose, you got to commit to this, this, and this and take care of yourself. And, and I remember saying to her, you could make a world cup team. And this was, I don't know when it was like 2016 or something. I invited her in first. Um, but yeah, but you know, that's the, the, that's what we wouldn't have gotten through, right? You know, we, Sammy and Linz and, and these players, yeah. um, you know, and I think that that's, that's healthy because like to what you started the, about the environment, I remember Tony and I would sit on the bus at the front of the bus and chat about practice and we'd look at each other and we'd be like, one day better. Like that was kind of our approach. How do we get one day better? And we know we, we pushed, I mean, the Tony always used to say to me, he's like, man, guy players would never listen to the amount of detail on these set pieces and train it and you know but Tony just, said that oh yeah he's like they wouldn't have you know because interesting it, because we we you know we were schooling and, and making sure that everything was buttoned up oh yeah because you know we looked I mean we looked back at how we'd lost major tournaments as a as a as a team over time I mean it was on set pieces it was penalty kicks it was so we we just I said I don't want to have any regrets of not looking at every single thing to help us be successful. And I remember talking to you guys and saying, we want penalty kicks just to be another phase of the game. Don't lower your heads. It's another chance to win. Yeah. Just kind of turning that mindset of we got this and we're going for it. So yeah, I mean, but, but the idea of just being one day better was you guys lived it and that's what we had to you know prepare you for. I absolutely think that you guys, that's it. I love how you put it that you like, we were, you were schooling us. Like you were teaching us exactly how you wanted us to play and teaching us how we were going to win the world cup and that's something that i think was different from 20 again i wasn't a starter in 2015 so um i played a very different role in that world cup but 2019 world cup i went into that tournament feeling the most prepared i've ever felt going into a tournament i felt like i had seen every situation and as the tournament progressed Every situation I faced, I felt like I had seen it before. I knew exactly what I was going to do individually, what the team was going to do, what the coaches were going to do. Like, I felt so incredibly prepared. And that's on set pieces, run of play, everything. Yep. So, and you just kind of touched on it, but how did you put together that plan of like, this is how we're going to layer in and get the team to this level of preparation? No, do you remember? I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you were in camp, but maybe you were hurt. But I put up a bunch of dots on a on a on a field, and I basically said to you guys, "We're going to play to your strengths." And when we looked at it, we could see we like your dot was hot pie. Like that's where we want to get you in a game as much as possible. How do we maximize our players' strengths? So so then we looked at the at the shape of the four three three. And it's not about the shape, but it was this idea that I think if we could be positionally more disciplined in our in our build up because. 
you know, at times, you know, I remember, I remember in 2016, you know, if our center back had the ball, we had four people checking to the ball, everybody wanted it at their feet. And there wasn't this understanding of cooperation positionally. Like if I do this, I open up this. And and when you've got players, you want rows in the pocket, you want to stretch that pocket. So, you know, these were things that we thought, and we said, well, we've got to be a little bit more maybe structured in our buildup. And you remember that. I mean, you remember as an outside back, sometimes we wanted you up high, sometimes we tucked you in because we wanted to open up spaces. So it was, it was a lot of thought to how do we get them disciplined in, but then also not take away their creativity. And I remember, you know, Tony would always say it was like, we final third, it's what you see your own, you know, your own skills, just it's free. Right. And, but let's figure out how we get there. And then the other thing I remember is just looking at the women's game and going, man, if we can score a lot of goals off of, I, I watched Liverpool a lot. This was when Liverpool were suddenly coming into this high pressing. Yep. And I remember, I actually met with, I saw Jurgen Klopp and I said, I modeled my team after you. Flat out the midfield. He's like, and, and I said, but I'm a Man United flan, fan. And he goes, <laughs> but now you're a Liverpool fan. And he has this yeah. great smile, right? Um, but I remember thinking, you know what? Our pressing is going to lead to goals. Like we're going to be the fittest team there. and. So I really did. I studied Liverpool a lot and looked at how they play. I mean, a flat three midfield at times it worked. So it was just this real kind of let's get a really good blueprint together. And then let's I think one of the things when I was a young coach, Kel, I would want to try and do the same drill differently because I thought the players would get bored. Right. Mm. But then no, what we I realized, did the same thing over and yeah, over again. But, you know, there'd be slight nuances. But then we got to a point where everybody knew their role. Yeah. And I said to Tony, and I feel this way about our staff too, right? Like if if our players have two things, if they have clarity in their role and their responsibilities and they feel valued, mm. we're going to blow this thing up. And that's what we really tried to work on was, you know, the game changers coming off the bench. And, and, and every time I was in front of the media, I was like, what's going to help you win? 23 players. Yep. So it was those two things. And then this blueprint that just kind of, I mean, yeah, it was a pretty cool ride. Yeah, it was incredible. And honestly, I, re- I remember being in um, in Tottenham when we were doing our pre-camp for World Cup and we were going over set pieces and I was like, this is our <laughs> 10,000 of like this past week that we're on the field doing set pieces. But you know what? And I was reading the book Power Habit at the time and it all clicked for me when the tournament started because I was like, I don't even have to think like Mm -hmm. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do in every moment of the game of a set piece everything and so does everyone else and because you guys were so militant about it and um and I was like they did this on purpose we don't even have to think (laughs) out there you know like it's easy do you remember do you remember us actually we we didn't present a scout on well we did do teams when we got into the tournament but we said we're going to prepare you for a world cup team here's Mm -hmm. what they do some have marking tendencies and I don't remember that meeting, but we literally had all the crests of, of the confederations, all the federations up. And we were like, you're going to be, it doesn't matter because, and then I think in that, in that camp, we said, we're not going to give you one more thing. Like it's just, now it's just refresh and review because you've already got all the information. And, and that was a conscious decision because, you know, suddenly changing things up or so we, I mean, I think our preparation was, I, I agree. I think we played the right teams. We, you know, remember France in January. Yep. And I remember standing on the field afterwards and saying, we're going to win. We were going to play this team again. And, you know, I think there was just a lot of good pieces, but you know, listen, you guys were unbelievable. So we were good. Another thing about preparation, which I've always been curious about, you brought up to us, and I don't know at what point you did this. It was very close to the tournament, I think was you had brought in a consulting firm to to mm-hmm. look at the team and identify and like pre- present to you guys all of our weaknesses and how we would lose the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And I remember you telling, as a staff, telling us this. And I was like, what are they going to tell us? see it. I was like, are they going <laughs> to tell us what it is? Like, how are we going to lose, you know? Yeah. So one, what made you do that? And mm-hmm. also, do you, ha- you want to share some of the ways we were going to lose? <laughs> uh, I'm still loyal. Um, okay. <laughs> But no, it was, it was interesting. I'd met a couple of people and, um, and I was like, you know, and I'd seen some of the work they'd done and they were willing to do some, some um, scouting for us in the world cup, like, you know, breaking down teams. And I remember saying to Tony, I said, you know, I want them to do us. 
And he's like, that's great. Let's genius. Let's do it. So we did it. And I remember sitting there. I wanted to know what they were going to exploit, how they were going to exploit it, what they were going to do. Because, you know, we always talk about countermeasures and how we, yep. so I think it was partly so that we could showcase our strengths. Because what also they told us is this is where no team can stay with you. This is where you're the best mm. in the world. So it was it was kind of validating. Um, but then it also allowed us and, and listen, if we're candid, we all, you know, I think you, you, you gradually learn where we, where we need, where we're vulnerable, where we need to, you know, shore things up and where mm-hmm. we, where we need to exploit things. So, yeah, I mean, I think it was a, it was a really reinforcing moment for us and it actually helped us continue this idea of preparing for a world cup team, not a specific opponent. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, oh gosh, I mean, I have it somewhere. I think I actually lost my computer that I had it on, but oh, no. um, it's yeah, a very I mean, valuable computer. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I just, you know, I, it wasn't things that we, you know, I mean, teams that press us and build up, teams that played with double pivots and 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 really, you know, tried to exploit the space on either side of the six. It was, you know, yep. things that again we we knew. Um, but uh, you know, I think one of the things that st- that really stung me in in um, in the, the Olympics in 2016 is, and when I started to look up, look back, I mean, I looked a lot of stuff. You know, how do we give up goals, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it was it was a transition goal. It was when we, know. You know, we're pressing, we're high, and it's suddenly this and we're... So we remember, we spent a lot of time on how to have countermeasures to the transition because if yep. we could stop teams transitioning... Yeah, there's no either, chance. Or we're better at dealing with it, we're going to win every yeah, day. Yeah, for sure. Well, yep. we we go to that tournament and we outscored... I, this, I didn't know this. The JWS team obviously does all my research or most of it. And this stuck out to me. We outscored our opponents 26 to 3 led for 442 minutes of 63 or 6 630 minutes and never trailed which i'm yeah. like damn that's like a good yeah. world cup and i was looking at our record under your tenure Haif actually sent me the uh the media book to go back and look i was like do you have this and you know we ha- there's there's losses there's ties throughout that but you you get to the world cups and it's all wins and it's like that's what you want out of the tournament. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, we're, we're on the field in Lyon. How did it feel for the final whistle to blow and, and to be back to back, the only manager in the history of the game, World Cups? Um, I, mean, I didn't think about that. I mean, just again, I think it was just, I was at that moment, it was less relief and more just, just so proud because it yeah. had been so hard for everyone and we'd endured a lot. Um, I was just so proud of, of, you know, the staff that hung in there, you know, the, just the resolve of the players. I, that was, it was just, you know, pure joy. I mean, I remember I stayed a long time at the party that time. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to enjoy this one. Cause it was, you know, I, hell, I, I had made my decision in January that I was like, you know, what, I'm going to go through the world cup and then I'm going to, I'm going to go do something different. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Was, so, so you knew. Yeah. I might, I mean, I didn't share it with anybody. I yes. think my wife knew, but yes. But I was like, you know what, it's just, you know, because shelf life wise, five and a half years, it's, it's actually a long time for being a national team coach. But for sure. So I was, yeah, I'd kind of made my decision um, to do that. So I really did try and stay in the moment and enjoy it and take it in um, because, yeah, it was it was uh, such a special day. And, and you know, the other point on all those stats is we played the top teams in the world to get through to that final. You know, when we started to get, when yeah. we got the knockout rounds, it was like, boom, boom, you know. So that was, it just made it, it just made it so, so special. Um, yeah, it was yeah. Such, such a great, great moment. It was an insane, I mean, insane tournament, insane, insane run. And the fact that we, you know, ended up on top again was incredible. Um, obviously, I'll never forget it. It was yep. highlight of, you know, one of the highlights of my career, if not the highlight at this point. Um, so you knew you were going to step down. Mm-hmm. You make the decision, you know, you you leave as, again, maybe the most successful manager of the women's national team, I would say so. Um, When you stepped down, did you, once Vlaco was hired, did you ever reach out and have a conversation with him? Did you give him any advice? Were you like, hey, good Um, luck? (laughs) You know, I mean, Vlaco and I knew, you know, I I knew Vlaco when he was a club coach. So we had had conversations and yeah, we we touched base a couple of times and, you know, um, I mean, I think it was, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think, you know, it was, 
I don't know, I'm trying to think if I gave him not not really advice. It was just making sure that you 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 follow your own path. It was kind of like, listen, you <laughs> you're gonna be in the shit seat a lot of times, <laughs> you know, and you know you can't please everybody. Like you know, it was just kind of those things. Like just really stay true. And you know, I always sort of say, you 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 know, you coach the team, but you manage the individual. But you got to make these decisions for what's best for the team. And that was how I was able to make. I mean, some decisions were heartbreaking for me. You know, yeah. there's a there's a human element to what you do but you had to do that because this is what you know this is what was going to be the best outcome so it was probably just kind of just saying something like that it was like just you know make sure you follow your own path and and do what you want to do what do you think your hardest moment as u.s women's national team coach was hmm. you're, you're probably like are there too many to count or like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um gosh i think yeah, I, I probably would say Rio, you know, I mm. would say Rio because, you know, it was just such an epic fail. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was, no, I know. It, it was, you know, it was just unfor- not unforeseen because that doesn't give enough credit to the opponent. But it was just something that um, just, you know, kind of it was a, a body blow, a fa- punch the face. It was everything. So I think, you know, as a coach, right, like I think some of the hardest moments are what do you say after a game, after a tough loss? Like those are moments as coaches that you you don't want to be in those moments. And then yeah. I think, you know what I think, Kel, that was hard. I think this was what was hard is we then set our trajectory on this new process, on this mm-hmm. process, right? And we said, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be, it's going to be ugly at times, blah, blah, blah. And I think it was sometimes having to say to you guys, we're in a process, trust the process. Cause then you're like, oh shit, you're hearing that so much, you know, but that was hard to, to make sure that, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't just dialogue. It was, it was like, it was actually tried- a process was actually happening. Well, and we tried, you know, we tried sometimes to even take some metrics to show that there's improvement, you know, I you- remember it's sometimes hard to, to measure that. And, you know, sometimes when you coach the national team, it's, no one wants to hear, oh my God, we got two new players. They're awesome. You know, like, that is there was a, <laughs> then people are like, oh my God, I'm out. I, you know, everyone stresses, right? Yeah. Um, so you had to be sort of measured in how you see progress, share progress, but then you want to make sure. I think that was, that was hard at times because there were, again, there were some tough games and we lost some games and it wasn't pretty, but we did feel like we were evolving. And sometimes that evolution was backwards before we went forwards. Makes sense. Um, and one last question on coaching the women's okay. national team. I feel like a lot you of ask people. ask me who my favorite player is. <laughs> well, that's, that's a quick hit question. Cause I know, I know yeah, what you're going to yeah. say. No. Um, do you feel like, I feel like a lot of people were like, oh, we won despite Jill. And like media said that some players have said that. And I'm personally like, it, you can't. There's no way that you can't give credit to Jill, to Tony, to Steve, like the the coaches that led us through this because they led us to back to back World Cup. So I'm I'm curious if you've ever if you're like, man, all I got on, I just got shit on the whole time and like zero love and zero respect, which which I will say, Cal, and now I say this, it, it is harder when you're a woman. I, I don't care. It is. That is. A, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that. It's, uh, I'm so glad you said that because it's so true. It's very true. Um, you know, people have a slightly different lens and slightly different metrics. And um, yeah, so no, listen, I mean, I feel, yeah, because listen, if you lose, it's your fault. And if you, if win, you win, it's the players. It's the players. <laughs> yeah. So I think, listen, as every coach knows that. So listen, people can have their opinions, have their yeah. thoughts. At the end of the day, I felt, listen, I didn't score a goal. I didn't get an assist. So yeah in many ways I didn't get it done but I think there's a lot to putting a group of people together and making it work and making them feel like they're invincible Um, because if you don't have the armory and the ammunition to step forward and feel bold and confident um, because I also know you know at times coaches can can demoralize a team right and can take their confidence and you know I I think the thing that I was probably proud of is man, I always tried to be so positive. I, you know, I'm, I never screamed to you. It, it's just like, listen, we are going to get there. And yeah. so I felt um, complete in the journey. And again, listen, everyone and their mother has an opinion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you're, you, you go home to your, to your family and 
and listen, I hope you know the I work hope, you've done and like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just yeah. like one player doesn't lose a game or win a game, right? It's just, you, you're just all in it together. And I think you have to share that because here's what I would say is, yeah, we, we don't win without a great medical staff or Don Scott or, you know, so, so true. We have to, you know, so I think so for, many pieces to success, but I will right. say that you were a big one personally thought so. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so you move on from manager of the U S women's national team. Uh, you're currently serving as an advisor to FIFA. I'm curious, where do you yeah. stand on the question of a World Cup every two years? That's a great question. Well, <laughs> just, you know, what, what ended up tra transpiring was, and obviously now I wasn't with a team, um, you know, I had, uh, I was going to the CONCACAF Gold Cup and I met with um, Gianni Infantino and he said, listen, I think what we want, we want to bring someone in who you know, can look at the landscape. And, and listen, I'm so honored and privileged. And why? Because, holy cow, Kel, I learned it, it's such a privileged seat I sat in. I had all the resources. I had an amazing domestic league players, you know, so many things that, and now I'm talking to the head coach of Hong Kong and I'm learning his struggles. And I'm and I'm talking to, you know, Asisa Ashwala and learning about what it's like to qualify. And so it was such an education for me in the game. You know, I thought I knew the, the world's game, but you know, it was just, it was humbling in a way. Um, and trying to bring these people together, trying to get, um, to get ideas. And we've got a lot of ideas, you know, we, we want to have a women's club world cup. Um, would love that. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, hell, let's just say it. We deserve it. Um, <laughs> we, you know, we want to, um, find ways I think to help, you know, leagues around the world and, and really, cause you know, we want, we want countries to have strong domestic leagues, um, and those things. And the, and the biennial world cup was a part of a bigger picture. And it was actually a, it was asked the FIFA was charged with this by FIFA Congress to, to look into it, you know, and as I went through it, I'm like, actually, yeah, I think it would be a cool thing Interesting. Um, because it's one. I think it's such a big it's such a big accelerator for our sport. It's the yeah. biggest accelerator. It's it's the um, and players players want to play meaningful games. I mean, you look at UEFA's qualifying and it's 15-0, 20-0 players want to play meaningful games. So I think for me on a personal level, um, putting my coaching hat on, I'm like, man, it's, you know, I think it would be, it'd be fantastic, mm. but listen, it's not my decision and it wasn't yeah. our, our group's decision. And, and ultimately who knows where it's going to fall out um, because there's a lot of opposition to it on the men's side. And, but I think it was actually, it was a way of us uh, growing our game because everything gets a bump from the world cup domestic leagues start. I mean, yeah. look at Italy. They had a great one in the World Cup and their league is thriving now and they've got a great team and, you know, Juve and all this stuff. So there's so many positives. Why don't we, why don't we amplify that? So that's mm. kind of the thought process. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's not my decision. And I just brought a lot of information to the table and share that. I definitely agree on the bump. I don't know if I'm on board yet for biannual World Cup as a yeah. player, just, just, yeah. uh, it's fair. you know, but, um, but interesting perspective of, what you think it would bring. And I can agree on some of those points. Um, all right, I've taken a lot of your time. You have been very gracious to sit here and chat with me and I've really enjoyed this, but I'm gonna hit you with some quick hit questions now. So right. if I wasn't involved in soccer, I would be? Professor. Oh, in what English. subject? Oh, yeah. really? Oh man, yeah, love it. Oh gosh, I was a terrible English student. That would be. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, I was like, you know, I tried to write my way out of a lot of things. So that's, I, I realized multiple choice was not my forte. I mean, I literally went down the ladder in picking my major. It was like, you know, okay, I can, I can bullshit a little bit. Let's, let's try English. That's <laughs> so. amazing. Okay. Yeah. How do you take your coffee? Uh, cream. Okay. Sugar? Nope. A lot of cream? Mm, enough to make it turn colors. I don't know. <laughs> not a ton. Not a ton. Okay. Okay. What is a secret ingredient to successful management that most people don't think about? Oh my God, that's a long question. Kel. I know it is. Uh, oh, secret Okay, what is the most underrated skill that one needs to be a manager? A empathy. good manager. Empathy. Mm. I, I think, think truthfulness that's... and empathy. I, can yeah. I go with two? Yeah. I think, you, I think you've got to be able to lay it out there, but you got to know that your your words have impact. You know? Yeah, um, no, I agree. So and you I definitely think... were always... I was very truthful with you, Kelly. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Even when I didn't like to hear it. Um, but it was it was good. At least I knew where I stood, you know? Um, all right. That's a perfect lead into the next one. True or false? I was your favorite athlete to coach. You, uh, true. 
Yay! Because <laughs> I'm because I'm here right now. You say that. Well, listen, I mean, listen. It's like picking your kids, but but uh, exactly. Kelly, you were. Uh, listen, I think your journey, like talk about a book worthy to come from kind of being on the, being in the spotlight, being in the shadows, you know, working your way out. I mean, it's, it is, it's, it's a good story. They should do a movie on you. It's definitely. Do you remember the first camp that you were officially head coach in 2014, sitting me down and saying, you're not a defender. You don't have a defensive mindset. You're going to be a forward for me. And I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You you didn't roster me that camp and then the next yeah, camp. Yeah, you guys. This is some hostilities coming. And then back you down. and then you did and then You've you didn't call me, and then you didn't call me in, and I was like, dang. And then you called me up and we're like, hey, we're bringing you in for qualifying and you're going to be an outside back. And I was like, I just got whiplash, but you want me to be there? I'll be there. You know. Yeah, I'm telling you, yours is one of the best stories ever. Because <laughs> it you're right. I mean, I think you know. I always. You know, when we have our one-on-ones and meetings, you, you, what I loved about you is you'd ask questions. You'd be like, yeah, but, and, and we would have a conversation and we'd mm-hmm. find this common ground. And you always, uh, and I'm not blowing smoke here, but you know, there's there's some players that literally can't look at the screen and kind of turn away. And I don't, oh, I don't want to talk about the computer. But, really? but you, you were always, um, you always, you know, just wanted to get better. Like that you honestly wanted to, to grow and get better and improve. And, you know, you would criti- critique yourself. And you know, when I knew we were going to win the World Cup, here's, here's a quick caveat that, you know, maybe oh, I can't you can wait. edit out, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> but I knew we were going to win the World Cup when we had a team meeting. And you know, you remember the time when we couldn't, you know, it was like you put up a goal against and everybody's cowering. And it's like, we, we got to get past that. We got to a point where we could actually critique each other in front mm. of each other. Yep. And I remember, I was a player, I remember you calling out players and I think, you know what, you should have done that. That's, you know, da, da, da. And I, I remember if we're at this point where we can hold each other accountable in a meeting room, there's love in this space. Yeah. And then we I, all were doing it for the purpose yeah. of getting better and winning a world cup. Yep. That's the, that's the thing. I remember the meeting and I remember thinking, I remember leaving the meeting and go, wow, we've come a long way. And if we yeah. can have that now transfer to the field, we're going to win. So that's what I love I that. Um, biggest influence in your life. Who's the biggest influence in your life or who's been the biggest influence in your life? My father, you know, and I say my mother, um, bless her. Um, yeah, I think my parents have just, yeah, they've, they've, been on this journey they've always been in my corner and, they have um, yeah they're pretty special they so. are you 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 got very lucky in the parent category um well that's it but where awesome. where to next for jill ellis like what's what's on the horizon for you what are you what are you looking to accomplish um you i mean try to, you want to sure. try to beat the spirits uh, yes very much so <laughs> yeah i mean I, like I'll be candid. Like I want to, I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know you do. You know, I, I want to win. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm that. I want to, I want to win, but you know, I want to, I want to try, you know, being in San Diego, like seeing people recognize our, I just, just being here. I, I've got, I've got a lot of work to do here. And so, you know, to, to, to be here um, and try and, you know, bring this, this program up and help, you know, facilitate and nurture it is, is, it's hard, but it's rewarding. Um, yeah. So that's that. And yeah, I don't know what's next. I mean, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Well, I I won't say I loved every minute of it in terms of Likewise. coach, player. <laughs> I know you didn't either. Um, but so thankful that I had you as a coach, that I got to be a part of this team through, you know, 2015, 2019, those two World Cups, winning them and I learned so much as a player under in my time under you. Um, and so thank you for that. And I appreciate you coming on here today and chatting and, you know, potentially answering some hard questions, but again, so much respect for you. So thankful that I was able to learn from you and, um, you know, I wish you nothing but the best except for when you're playing the spirits <laughs> got that. and um and yeah thanks it was it was nice to catch up and and go down memory lane with you thank you well likewise it's uh, it's been a pleasure and i really enjoyed it and um yeah that's because of you and what i think of you that's why i decided to do this so thank you the players pod wouldn't be possible without our partners at wis wis helps entrepreneurs and business leaders fulfill their potential by turning temporary roadblocks into long-term wins No matter your business needs, WIS is ready to team up and take your company to the next level. 
So head to wist.com to learn more about how they can help your business on its championship journey. That's wiss.com to find the teammates you need to accelerate your dreams and achieve your business goals today.